Mason Graham at Michigan, Woo! six foot three, three hundred and eighteen pounds. He was playing amongst a very talented group, and he's going to be playing on a defense that returns a lot of really good defensive linemen at edge at the interior spots. There's a lot of good linebackers that are coming back. So Mason Graham is going to continue to produce. He is not a tricky evaluation, but one of those evaluations you do have to take with a grain of salt with some of the things that he does. I think what's what pops for me in terms of the positives, <laughs> super low to the ground, super wide base, really good flexibility, body control. He's the type of guy who light feet, he's going to give you a hard ass time on a double team. He's going to hold himself at the line of scrimmage. He's going to locate the football. You could see the flashes of upside of him as a pass rusher because he has those quick feet. Yep. His hands are not as effective as they think that they could be, and his production as a pass rusher could be better if I if he had more of a pass rush move set, in my opinion. But overall, the athleticism pops every single play that this kid yep. is on the field. He's a very efficient player overall, and I think that the stats would indicate the dominance that he has on the football field if he just played more. I mean, they had like three interior defensive linemen last year for Michigan that paid over 400 snaps, but there was nobody over like 420, I think, overall, Mm -hmm. right? So, like, he shared a lot of reps with Kenneth Grant, who we'll talk about this summer, and Chris Jenkins, who just went in the second rounds in the 2024 NFL draft. So he shared a lot of snaps inside. Look, man, I am in here, Joe. I'm in on Mason Graham, which pains me to say, as a Notre Dame fan at heart, I hate the University of Michigan, but, buddy, this is this so far is arguably the easiest evaluation I've had to do. This is so far this summer he is and it, it i think it is exemplified in his backgrounds funny enough real quick one before i give you a little bit of cool yeah. background on him joe three-star recruit by two different platforms coming out of servites in the state of california espm had him raked rated as a three-star and the number those rankings are meaningless two defensive <laughs> linemen in the class 72 <laughs> defensive linemen in the Yikes. twenty, what was it twenty twenty two NFL draft? I mean twenty twenty two recruiting cycle, right? So massively underrated recruits. But the cool thing is, is that at Survey, also only twenty years old, by the way, will not turn twenty one until September. A little bit of a quick note there. All state wrestler, all mm, state, you can see all that region wrestler film. in a talent rich area in the state of California that is very big on wrestling. Right, heavyweight. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. so California out there in Servites? Yeah, and like Bosco and all. I didn't. I, I I honestly didn't yeah. know that wrestling was a big. I mean, I was oh, just yeah. thinking New Jersey in the Midwest is like the biggest I, wrestling I mean, well, areas. I, I didn't know California was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I I mean, I used to have a I used to have a coach in high school that actually um, wrestled out in Orange County in California, and that's no. like legit, legit. Because I mean, they because then you see the offensive and defensive linemen that like. Modern True, day good point. and St. John Bosco put out every single year. And this is the same area, obviously, in Servite. So 6'3", 318 pounds, crazy hand strength, dude. Like when he gets inside of you, he is a hard dude to counter and be able to get his hands off you. Like he is strong as an ox, low to the ground, really dense. But then he has some surprising flexibility and short area quickness, man. This kid can play anything, in my opinion, from a zero out to a 4-4-I four, four in a three-man front if you needed him to. Like, he is that type of versatile movement-based player, and he can do all the dirty work, too. You could want to, you could throw him in as a zero-tech in a nose and just be like, go ahead, go to work, Mason Graham, and he could do the deed, man. This is eval. There's really nothing that I think that he lacks as an athlete. He's not the tallest or longest, no. I suppose, but, like, short area quickness physicality, strong hands, low center of gravity, good pad level involved there. Like, there's, it's just, this is easy. This is easy, Joe. Let's not overthink this, man. Mason Graham's really, well, really good, man. Really good. The, this, is, this isn't an overthink, but I, I, yeah. I absolutely acknowledge the, I mean, the flashes are there. My grade that I'm about to share in a second is very reflective of that. The only thing that pops out to me that's an issue that he needs to fix, and it's, it's all stuff that's coachable, I just feel like he plays on the ground a lot. Like I feel like, and it's it's the 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 balance of playing as low to the ground as he does and having a wrestling background. You can see it when he gets knocked to the ground. He scraps and claws and kind of bear crawls his way out of it to try and still make a play and still try to create a 
uh, you know, to create clutter at the line of scrimmage. But I still do see and acknowledge a ton of times on film when I was watching him, he does get knocked to the ground a lot. And that that was, it is what frustrated me with him. It's not enough for me to say, oh, I'm not taking him in the, in the first round. I'm not going to go that far. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this isn't a top five defensive tackle. Right. I would be on crack if I were going to say that. But it is a negative that I see on film that needs to be acknowledged that just kept showing up for me. Are you saying that people on crack can't have good takes? Is that what you're trying to imply here? Uh, I would argue that crack would uh, would disrupt the um, decision making and Charts. cloud judgment of individuals. If you're willing to do crack, you probably don't think things through. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. I'm just I'm just trying to make a. You try to joke. tell us you do crack? <laughs> no, I've never done crack before in my life. But that's I, a shame. <laughs> you're an idiot, dude. You're an absolute <laughs> idiot. I, 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 so for me, the biggest things that I want to see from Mason Graham's as far as improvement, right? You mentioned it a little bit, but I think that there are points, especially working against double teams where his feet stagnate a little bit and he doesn't really run his feet consistently on contact when he tries to anchor. And I think that can disrupt his balance a little bit at times. I think that that just, I think his feet just kind of get flat footed a little bit when he's kind of taken on blocks at the point of attack at times. Which got to just throw off his equilibrium a little bit. I hope that uh, that honestly makes sense, right? Nice. I think otherwise, it's just Michigan asked him to do a lot of the dirty work in in the defense this past year. They asked him to do a yeah. lot of just the little nuance of like two gapping and doing those types of things. I want to see him take the shackles off this year and let him go because I think that there is legit pass rush upside here that has not been quite tapped into. I would not be surprised at all in a team because. What do you have? Seven and a half tackles for loss, three sacks. He was disruptive, though, if you watch the film. Like, yeah. He's a disruptive football player. But I would not be surprised if, without Chris Jenkins, if they do a little bit of a less of a rotation and they just work with Kenneth Grant and Mason Graham as the mainstays of that defensive line and maybe he plays over 500 snaps, I wouldn't be prized, surprised if you get a six, seven, maybe even eight sack season out of Mason Graham because I think the upside is there as a pass rusher, man. I just don't think that's a part of his game that Michigan has highlighted as much. So it's more of a I think it's there, but I want to see it, right? Like, I want to see him take a next step as a pass rusher because if he does, then we're talking about a even easier evaluation. We're talking about an all-around defensive lineman that has every facet of the game down and there present. It's just about showcasing that skill set in 2024. I had a top 25 grade on him, and that is maybe a little revealing of where my rankings currently sit. Yep. I, I absolutely see everything. I think there's certainly a well-roundedness. You can't go wrong drafting a Michigan defensive lineman these days. You you really can't. actually. What am I talking about? Yes, you can. Who who, who is the 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 Joker? Is the Cowboys? Ozzie yeah. Smith. What am I talking about? Yeah, you yeah, obviously could go wrong so we'll just drafting. Just make on that one two years. Oh uh, God, <laughs> what a terrible take by me. But Mason yes. Graham, I think, is going to be an exception to that, and why I would be willing to invest in him. Uh, I would take him somewhere in the first round, absolutely, yep. within the top 20 picks. Young player, dense, explosive, physical, wrestling background. Easy evaluation, in my opinion. This right now is a mid-first round grade for me, and I think he has the upside to get into the top of the first round as far as grades perspective because everything is there. Again, it's just about I want to see a, one specific facet of his game more consistently and in a uh, just a bigger sample size. If I see that growth as a pass rusher, this dude's got everything you need, man. He is going to be a stalwart against the run, and he has all the upside and athleticism and physicality to be a consistent penetration style player. So yes, in on Mason Graham, brother. First round grade from your boy. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Drop a comment below. Let us know what you think about both of these two prospects at Rise and Draft at Joe DeLeon, leave us a five-star review, and we will be back with more on the 2025 NFL Draft. Bet Online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to bet online today and use promo code believe that's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit. That is a 50% welcome bonus bet online where the game starts.